Welcome to this 12-minute presentation on awareness beyond breast cancer. Over the years, we have come to believe that all women's breasts and lives are at risk because of the possibility of impending doom of breast cancer. But is this true? If you have ever had any doubts that women are potentially doomed to breast cancer, this presentation is for you. I am Carol Chandler, and I have been imaging, treating, and helping women maintain their health for more than 20 years. In the history of the world, there is no part of the human anatomy with as much international public attention as the female breast. The first section of this presentation will address some facts that are not usually well known or understood, followed by an alternative way to assess the value of women's breasts. Awareness is vital for making decisions about life and health. Except in rare cases, breast cancer is not genetically related. Breast cancer is a result of cellular damage primarily related to lifestyle habits, emotional distress, toxins, chemicals, and radiation exposure, all known to cause cellular damage resulting in a growth in the breast, which is most often diagnosed as cancer. There is no known documented or accepted cure for solid tumor breast cancer. Management of breast cancer with surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation is a current strategy and has been for decades. Nearly all women who have died of breast cancer have had this course of treatment without success. Cancer will not kill in the breast because the breast is not a vital organ. Sometimes they remain local and will not become fatal, but they are still diagnosed as cancer. Cells must metastasize to a vital organ to become fatal. Only 20% of diagnosed breast cancers become fatal, which means that 80% of all women diagnosed will eventually die of something else. So there may be an assumption that the disease did not metastasize to a vital organ. All breast cancers are not the same and all do not metastasize. Remember, only 20% are fatal. In the United States, breast cancer is responsible for only 4-5% to of total deaths of women each year. A woman is far more likely to experience heart, vascular, and lung disease, which are collectively responsible for 71% of total deaths in the United States each year. More women will die of Alzheimer's disease than breast cancer. I mention these facts because they do surprise most people because it is generally believed that breast cancer is one of the leading causes of death for women when in fact the risk for an individual woman is far less than expected. You can see that statistic of 1 in 8 commonly used to encourage women to be tested for cancer is significantly overstated. Let's review for a moment the established causes of breast cancer in general. The first event is damage to DNA which can be caused by radiation, environmental or ingested toxins, inflammation, and metabolic dysfunction, often related to diet and other unhealthy activities that are a result of our 21st century lifestyle. Cancer is primarily a lifestyle disease with genetics playing a small role. In most cases, the body's immune system will repair and eliminate damaged cells, but if the DNA is damaged and goes unrepaired, the cells don't die like they should, and over the years what begins as a single unrepaired damaged cell becomes a colony of billions of cells. Here is a mathematical representation of the doubling factors when cells are dividing but not dying as they should and begin to accumulate. This chart is not exactly what happens because this is never a completely predictable event. Everyone's cellular metabolism is unique. However, it is well documented that by eight years, the colony of cells can grow to over a billion cells, or about the size of a very small bean, at which time it can be detected with an x-ray. This is also surprising to most people because it is widely believed that because something is so small that it must be new, when in fact it is very mature and very large in the world of cells. Remember this chart? In fact, after so many years, if it were going to spread, it has already had plenty of time to do so. Remember, however, most breast cancers never spread because we know most women diagnosed never die of breast cancer. The point here is, what is early, what is small, and what is life-threatening? 
Remember, there is no cure for breast cancer at this time. Besides, there are different kinds of breast cancers. Some are even harmless, but all are treated the same. The burden of cancer screening is always an expected percentage of overdiagnosis. Considering that most women do not believe they will ever have breast cancer, together with the fact that the huge majority of women will never experience breast cancer in her lifetime, a woman may ask herself if it is worth the risk to limit herself to only one type of examination that is focused specifically on detection. This is a personal consideration each woman can make for herself. Some believe more and different investigation is a wise decision. Now that we have reviewed some of the basics of the current status and beliefs about breast cancer, we have come to the point in this presentation where we begin to switch our awareness from the fear of disease to the value of the female breast for monitoring and improving her general health and quality of life. One important aspect that seems to have been forgotten in the rush to detect breast cancer is that while waiting for detection, we have gone way past the time when we could have at least made an effort to change the consequences and the sequence of events that lead to the full development of a lesion, whether it is life-threatening or not. Remember, most women diagnosed, diagnosed do not die of breast cancer. The breast and chest cover a large area and located over the vital organs of the heart and lungs. In that region of the body is also the thymus, a major immune organ, and a large network of lymph glands. Hormones flood the breast so that women feel the ebb and flow of hormonal activity during their cycles, pregnancy, and menopause. All of these influence can have an effect on the breast as well as a woman's general health and have nothing to do with cancer. Remember, the huge majority of women are never diagnosed with breast cancer, but all are at one time or another affected by the normal or abnormal, abnormal physiologies and metabolic processes surrounding the breasts. In order to monitor the ebb and flow of changes in the chest and breast area, which affects everyone, we need a sensitive, safe, and cost-effective monitoring test. These changes are unseen, not only with our eyes, but also with x-rays. But they need to be observed to determine the possibility of unusual or abnormal activity in real time as it is happening. That safe, affordable, real-time monitoring test is available to you. We call it thermography. It is sensitive to minute biological and physiological changes that can define balance or imbalance or possible vascular, hormonal, or metabolic abnormality, not only related to the breast, but related to the condition of the body in general. I must show you this because it supports what some women believe, that it is possible to prevent cancer with a diagnostic test. Common sense tells you that if you are looking for something that has already happened, it is a physical impossibility to prevent it. A test aimed at detecting a disease cannot prevent it. However, a test focused on identifying subtle changes identified as risk factors can alert those who are willing to heed the warning to take, make changes, to perhaps change the sequence of events that would lead to disease, not only breast disease, but perhaps other more serious diseases. Thermography is not a cancer detection device. It is so much more. It is sensitive, not specific, where other devices may be specific, but not sensitive. It will give you, it will give you a moment to look at the slide. These are all commonly seen patterns. Can thermography detect a right recognizable abnormality that would encourage a healthcare provider to recommend further evaluation if necessary? Well, absolutely. That is how it can be used. A safe, affordable method to monitor human health, men included. In today's world of healthcare challenges, the preference is to manage the healthy body, not to manage only the disease. For more comprehensive assessment of digestive, thyroid, dental, and many other areas of concern, we recommend an initial full body or health screening of the head and torso as a baseline assessment with follow-up screenings as indicated. 
Many women like to have thermography breast exams annually and may use it in conjunction with other screening methods. I also recommend that if you have had more than three mammograms in your life, that you monitor your breasts with thermography. Thermography has been utilized over 50 years with significant technological advancements as well as greater understanding of thermal physiology and how valuable it can be for sensitive early changes to assist in making lifestyle changes for better health and greater quality of life. Thinking positive is an important aspect of health. Thank you for your kind attention. Our goal is to provide awareness that although breast cancer is a serious disease, it is not an epidemic. Focusing on fear and disease over the last three decades has taken the focus off of breast health. I trust this has been informative and valuable as you make your own personal health assessment decisions. For more information, please refer to the person who provided this presentation. We look forward to seeing you in healthy living color. Be well.